CD2 Unit 7 The World We Live In Page 44, Exercise 2 Perspectives Clean Up Our City Part A Listen to an announcement from an election campaign. What kinds of problems does Roberta Chang want to fix? Vote for Roberta Chang, City Council. Roberta Chang will clean up Cradville. Have you noticed these problems in our city? The air is being polluted by fumes from cars and trucks. Potholes aren't being repaired due to a lack of funding. The homeless have been displaced from city shelters because of overcrowding. Many parks have been lost through overbuilding. Our city streets are being damaged as a result of heavy traffic. Our fresh water supply is being depleted through overuse by people who don't conserve. A vote for Roberta Chang is a vote for solutions. Page 45, Exercise 3, Grammar Focus Passive with Prepositions Present Continuous Passive The air is being polluted by fumes from cars and trucks. City streets are being damaged as a result of heavy traffic. Potholes aren't being repaired due to a lack of funding. Present Perfect Passive Many parks have been lost through overbuilding. The homeless have been displaced because of overcrowding in city shelters. Page 46, Exercise 4, Pronunciation Reduction of Auxiliary Verbs Part A. Listen and Practice Notice how the auxiliary verb forms is, are, has, and have are reduced in conversation. Fresh water's being wasted. Newspapers are being thrown away. Too much trash has been created. Parks have been lost. Page 46, Exercise 5, Listening. Environmental Solutions. Part A. Listen to three people describe some serious environmental problems. Check the problem each person talks about. 1. Jenny. Wait, don't throw that out. Why not? Recycle it. I've been reading a lot about how much trash we produce and what happens to all of it, and it really has me worried. Why? Well, it seems that the easiest way to dispose of trash is by burying it in landfills, land that could be used by farmers to grow food and other things. The problem is that in many countries, the dumping areas have already been filled up, and it's hard to find places to start new ones. Of course, no one wants trash buried in their neighborhood, but it has to go somewhere. So what's the solution? Well, there is no easy solution. However, many cities are trying to do more recycling so that they can reduce the amount of stuff that goes into the landfills. 2. Adam I love my new phone, but I don't know what to do with my old one. It's so outdated. I know I shouldn't just throw it away. Well, you're right about that. Not disposing of electronic devices and other appliances properly is a huge problem these days. Not just here, but all over the world. Many people don't know what to do with their old phones, computers, video game systems, TV sets, refrigerators. There are dangerous chemicals in these products, and they have to be handled in the right way. So, what are we supposed to do? Well... E-waste is not going away. With all the new technology these days, there's more e-waste than ever before. The solution is just to dispose of it responsibly. The good news is that there are more and more e-waste processing centers where professionals take these products and separate them into their various parts. Many of the parts can be reused, of course. 
Three, Katie. You know, you always hear about air pollution, but not many people are aware of the problem of water pollution. You mean in the oceans? No, I mean polluted drinking water. It's a problem in almost every major city in the world. Almost all our rivers and lakes, where we get our drinking water from, are being polluted in some way by businesses, farms, homes, industries, and other sources. And even though the water most of us drink is treated, it's still not a hundred percent pure. So, what's the solution? Well, it's a complicated problem to solve, but basically, what's involved is treating all waste products more carefully so that dangerous chemicals and bacteria don't get into our water supply. Page 46, Exercise 5, Part B. Listen again. What can be done to solve each problem? Complete the chart. 1. Jenny. Wait, don't throw that out. Why not? Recycle it. I've been reading a lot about how much trash we produce and what happens to all of it, and it really has me worried. Why? Well, it seems that the easiest way to dispose of trash is by burying it in landfills, land that could be used by farmers to grow food and other things. The problem is that in many countries, the dumping areas have already been filled up, and it's hard to find places to start new ones. Of course, no one wants trash buried in their neighborhood, but it has to go somewhere. So what's the solution? Well, there is no easy solution. However, Many cities are trying to do more recycling so that they can reduce the amount of stuff that goes into the landfills. 2. Adam I love my new phone, but I don't know what to do with my old one. It's so outdated. I know I shouldn't just throw it away. Well, you're right about that. Not disposing of electronic devices and other appliances properly is a huge problem these days. Not just here, but all over the world. Many people don't know what to do with their old phones, computers, video game systems, TV sets, refrigerators. There are dangerous chemicals in these products, and they have to be handled in the right way. So, what are we supposed to do? Well, e-waste is not going away. With all the new technology these days, there's more e-waste than ever before. The solution is just to dispose of it responsibly. The good news is that there are more and more e-waste processing centers where professionals take these products and separate them into their various parts. Many of the parts can be reused, of course. 3. Katie You know, you always hear about air pollution, but not many people are aware of the problem of water pollution. You mean in the oceans? No, I mean polluted drinking water. It's a problem in almost every major city in the world. Almost all our rivers and lakes, where we get our drinking water from, are being polluted in some way by businesses, farms, homes, industries, and other sources. And even though the water most of us drink is treated, it's still not 100% pure. So what's the solution? Well, it's a complicated problem to solve, but basically what's involved is treating all waste products more carefully so that dangerous chemicals and bacteria don't get into our water supply. Page 47, Exercise 7, Conversation. What can we do? Part A. Listen and practice. Look at all those dead fish. What do you think happened? Well, there's a factory outside town that's pumping chemicals into the river. How can they do that? Isn't that against the law? Yes, it is. But a lot of companies ignore those laws. That's terrible. What can we do about it? Well, one way to change things is to talk to the company's management. What if that doesn't work? 
Well, then another way to stop them is to get a TV station to run a story on it. Yes, companies hate bad publicity. By the way, what's the name of this company? It's called Avox Industries. Really? My uncle is one of their top executives. Page 47, Exercise 7, Part C. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What do Andy and Carla decide to do? Wait a minute. Before we do anything, shouldn't we make sure that we've got our facts straight? Absolutely. The best thing to do is to monitor the situation over the next several weeks to see what exactly is happening. How do we do that? Well, we can take pictures of the river and even take water samples to see how bad the situation is. We can get some friends to help. Okay, and then maybe I should talk to my uncle about it. That would be fantastic. Page 47, Exercise 8, Grammar Focus Infinitive Clauses and Phrases One way to change things is to talk to the company's management. Another way to stop them is to get a TV station to run a story. The best ways to fight cancer are to do more research and educate people. Unit 8 Lifelong Learning Page 50, Exercise 2, Perspectives Part A. Listen to the survey. Who is the survey targeting? What does the survey want to know? Pick a subject. We are expanding the school curriculum next year. What kinds of classes should we add? Please take a moment to answer a few questions. 1. Would you rather take a business class or a communications class? I'd rather take a business class. Go to question 2A. I'd rather take a communications class. Go to question 2B. I'd rather take another type of course. Go to question 3. 2A. Would you prefer to study commerce or marketing? I'd prefer to study commerce. I'd prefer to study marketing. I'd prefer not to study either. I'd prefer another business course. 2B. Would you rather study journalism or new media? I'd rather study journalism. I'd rather study new media. I'd rather not study either. I'd prefer another communications course. 3. What other types of courses would you add to the curriculum? Page 51, Exercise 3, Pronunciation. Intonation in Questions of Choice. Listen and practice. Notice the intonation in Questions of Choice. Would you prefer to study nursing or education? Would you rather be a psychologist or an engineer? Page 51, Exercise 4, Grammar Focus. Would rather and would prefer. Would rather takes the base form of the verb. Would prefer usually takes an infinitive. Both are followed by not in the negative. Would you rather take a business or communications class? I'd rather take a communications class. I'd rather than take either. I'd rather take another course than study business or communications. Would you prefer to study business or communications? I'd prefer to study business. I'd prefer not to study either. Let's join a club. I'd rather not join a club. I'd rather not. I'd prefer not to join a club. I'd prefer not to.
Page 52, Exercise 5, Listening, Just for Fun, Part A. Listen to three people talk about the part-time courses they took recently. What course did each person take? 1. Linda. So, Linda, what have you been doing with yourself? Not much. Oh, wait, that's not true. I took this great dancing class last semester. Oh, yeah? What kind of dancing? We learned African dance and samba. Wait, why would you want to learn African dance and samba? It sounds exhausting. And it's not like you would dance that way in clubs. Oh, just for fun. You should try taking the class. You'll see that you learn more than just dancing. You also learn how to be more confident and how to interact better with other people. Hmm... I think with all that dancing around, I'd be too exhausted to interact with anyone. 2. Rich So, how did you enjoy your cooking course? It was great. What kinds of things did you learn to cook? Well, it was a course on vegetarian cooking. I didn't know you were a vegetarian. Oh, I'm not, but a lot of people are these days. So I thought it would be useful to know how to make some interesting dishes without meat for times when I invite friends over for dinner. Hmm. Well, I guess that makes sense. Oh, but we learned more than just cooking. They also taught us all kinds of useful things about, you know, the health value of different kinds of vegetables and how to prepare them so that you don't remove all the vitamins they contain. So, uh, when's dinner? 3. Gwen I just got my grade in the mail. I got an A. Wow, that's terrific. Congratulations. What kind of course was it? It was an online course on how to open and run a small business. An online course? How interesting. Did it help? Yes, absolutely. We learned a lot of general principles and a lot about fi finance. Even if I don't open a business, I learned a lot about investing and managing money. Great! Can you manage my money? My finances are a mess. Page 52, Exercise 5, Part B. Listen again. What additional information did each person learn? 1. Linda. So, Linda, what have you been doing with yourself? Not much. Oh, wait, that's not true. I took this great dancing class last semester. Oh, yeah? What kind of dancing? We learned African dance and samba. Wait, why would you want to learn African dance and samba? It sounds exhausting. And it's not like you would dance that way in clubs. Oh, just for fun. You should try taking the class. You'll see that you learn more than just dancing. You also learn how to be more confident and how to interact better with other people. Hmm. I think with all that dancing around, I'd be too exhausted to interact with anyone. 2. Rich So, how did you enjoy your cooking course? It was great. What kinds of things did you learn to cook? Well, it was a course on vegetarian cooking. I didn't know you were a vegetarian. Oh, I'm not, but a lot of people are these days. So I thought it would be useful to know how to make some interesting dishes without meat for times when I invite friends over for dinner. Hmm. Well, I guess that makes sense. Oh, but we learned more than just cooking. They also taught us all kinds of useful things about, you know, the health value of different kinds of vegetables and how to prepare them so that you don't remove all the vitamins they contain. So, uh, when's dinner? 3. Gwen I just got my grade in the mail. I got an A. Wow, that's terrific. Congratulations. What kind of course was it? It was an online course on how to open and run a small business. An online course? How interesting. Did it help? Yes, absolutely. We learned a lot of general principles and a lot about finance. Even if I don't open a business, I learned a lot about investing and managing money. Great! 
Can you manage my money? My finances are a mess. Page 52, Exercise 8, Conversation. Maybe I should try that. Part A. Listen and practice. So, how's your French class going? Not bad, but I'm finding the pronunciation difficult. Well, I imagine it takes a while to get it right. You know, you could improve your accent by listening to language CDs. That's a good idea. But how do you learn new vocabulary? I always seem to forget new words. I learn new English words best by writing them on pieces of paper and sticking them on things in my room. I look at them every night before I go to sleep. Hmm. Maybe I should try something like that. Page 52, Exercise 8, Part B. Listen to two other people explain how they learn new words in a foreign language. What techniques do they use? 1. I keep a record of new words I come across. Then I make up study cards. I write the word on one side of the card and the meaning on the other side. Oh, and I always include at least one sentence with a word in it. Then I go through the cards whenever I have some spare time, like when I'm waiting for my laundry to dry or on the bus, and study the words until I know them by heart. Every week or so, I organize the cards into categories. You know, I put all the words together that have to do with food or work or home or school, whatever I can find that my new words have in common. 2. I keep a vocabulary list on my computer. It's organized alphabetically. Whenever I hear or read a new word, I add it to the list. Then when I have time, I look it up in my dictionary. I also try to put down some key information about the word, you know, whether it's a noun or a verb, and some examples of how it's used. I go through the list and study the words as often as I can. I really believe that the only way to learn new words, even in your own language, is by memorizing them. Page 53, Exercise 9, Grammar Focus By plus gerund to describe how to do things. You could improve your accent by listening to language CDs. I learn new words best by writing them on pieces of paper and sticking them on things. The best way to learn slang is not by watching the news, but by watching movies. Page 53, Exercise 10, Discussion Ways of Learning Part A Listen to Todd and Lucy describe how they developed two skills. How did they learn? Complete the chart. 1. Learn to play a musical instrument. Todd. I play the guitar. I haven't played for very long, maybe about two years. The way I learned was by practicing by myself with a how-to video my girlfriend bought for me. It takes a lot of patience to teach yourself how to do something, especially a musical instrument. But it works for me. I'm still learning, and I can practice as little or as much as I want. And I'm slowly getting better and better. There are even free video lessons online I check out sometimes. Lucy. I could never teach myself a musical instrument. I need a teacher and one who makes me practice. That's how I learned the piano. I started taking lessons when I was in middle school. I'd go to a neighbor's house after school twice a week, and she'd teach me for an hour or so. She was a good teacher, strict, but she knew how to get me to play. I suppose it helps that I've always wanted to play the piano. I don't take lessons anymore but I still practice at least once a week. You know that saying, 
If you don't use it, you lose it. 2. Become a good conversationalist. Todd. I guess I learned how to communicate with people when I was a flight attendant. I worked as a flight attendant for five years. The most important thing you have to do in that job is to talk to passengers, especially during long flights. You learn to talk about all kinds of stuff, and you find out just how interesting some people's lives are. I think the key to being a good conversationalist is to be sincerely interested in other people and to try to get them to talk about themselves as much as possible. Lucy I had always been really shy. I was the sort of person who could go to a party and never talk to anybody. And when you don't talk to anybody, it's hard to make friends. Anyway, my sister suggested I take an acting class. She said it might help me become more outgoing. So I did it. I was really frightened in that first acting class. But you know, it really helped. The teacher was very kind and taught me that I could talk to anybody just by pretending I had confidence. Unit 7 to 8 Progress Check Page 57, Exercise 3, Listening I could just kick myself. Listen to people talk about recent events and activities in their lives. What events and activities are they talking about? What quality does each person's behavior demonstrate? Complete the chart. 1. Mark I could just kick myself. Come on, Mark. It could happen to anyone. I lost the game for us. All I had to do was kick it past the goalie. Yeah, but that goalie is tough to get by. No way. I'm a much better player. And there was no one in the way. Everybody else was at the other end of the field. Yeah, but we all miss one sometimes. Yeah, and I won't let that happen again. How are you going to do that? By playing the game better. 2. Joan I did it! I did it! Oh my gosh, Joan, what happened? I did it! I did it! Joan, calm down. What happened? I got into the company I auditioned for. Really? That's fantastic. But I thought you auditioned and didn't make it. I did. I felt really bad about not making it for a while, but then I decided I couldn't be depressed forever, so I started dancing again on my own. I worked really hard, and by practicing every day, I got better and better. Then I saw in the newspaper that they were having auditions again. So I went in, I auditioned, and I got in. That's great. Congratulations. 3. Kim Kim, when did you start doing this? Oh, a few months ago. I'd never picked up a brush before. What made you start? I'm not sure. I've always wanted to paint or draw, but my brother was the artistic one. I was on the basketball team. Last month, I decided I wanted to take a class at the community center. It was this or yoga. I decided on this. I feel like I've learned how to relax by painting. You're not bad, you know. Thanks. Who is it? It's you. Unit 9. Improvements. Page 58, Exercise 2, Perspectives. Part A. Listen to an advertisement. Would you use a service like this? Why or why not? Hazel's Personal Services. Don't have time to do all the things you need to do? Call Hazel's Personal Services. Get your apartment cleaned, have your car washed, get your computer fixed, and much more, all for a very low price. Call Hazel, 646-555-2121. If Hazel doesn't offer the service you need, she'll find someone who does, guaranteed. Hazel offers 
Computer support, repairs, beauty services, financial services, laundry and dry cleaning, pet sitting. Page 59, Exercise 3, Grammar Focus. Get or have something done. Use get or have, the object, and the past participle of the verb to describe a service performed for you by someone else. Do something yourself. I clean my apartment every week. He is washing his car. They fixed their computer. Did you repair your watch? Where can I print these pictures? Get or have something done for you. I get my apartment cleaned every week. I get my apartment cleaned by Hazel every week. He is having his car washed. They got their computer fixed. Did you have your watch repaired? Where can I get these pictures printed? Page 59, Exercise 4, Pronunciation. Sentence Stress. Part A. Listen and Practice. Notice that when the object becomes a pronoun, sentence B, it is no longer stressed. Where can I get my watch fixed? You can get it fixed at the time shop. Where can I have my shoes shined? You can have them shined at Sunshine Shoes. Page 61, Exercise 8, Conversation. I have two left feet. Part A. Listen and practice. This is so depressing. I haven't had a date since Angela broke up with me. What can I do? Why don't you join an online dating service? That's how I met Amy. Actually, I've tried that. But the people you meet are always different from what you expect. Well, what about taking a dance class? A friend of mine met his wife that way. A dance class? Are you serious? Sure, why not? They offer them here at the gym. I don't think that's a very good idea. Have you ever seen me dance? I have two left feet. Page 61, Exercise 9, Grammar Focus. Making Suggestions. With modals plus verbs. Maybe you could go to a chat room. With gerunds. What about taking a dance class? Have you thought about asking your friends to introduce you to their other friends? With negative questions. Why don't you join an online dating service? With infinitives. One option is to join a club. It might be a good idea to check out those discussion groups at the bookstore. Page 62, Exercise 10, Listening. All you have to do is... Part A. Listen to people give different suggestions for each problem. Put a line through the suggestion that was not given. 1. How to overcome shyness. Well, I think if you're really shy, it might be a good idea to see a therapist or someone like that. You know, to get some professional help. You can't always change by yourself. Or how about getting one of those self-help books from the library? I'm sure there are books around with lots of good suggestions that you can try. I think the best thing is to join a club and do activities where you have to meet and talk to different people. Like, if you join a theater group and work on putting on a play, you'll probably be able to overcome your shyness. 2. How to stop biting your fingernails. I think biting your fingernails is just a sign of anxiety. 
So the first thing to do is to find out what's making you nervous. Once you've identified that problem and then solved it, the nail biting will disappear. My sister used to bite her nails all the time, so she started wearing bright red nail polish. She bought the really expensive kind, so she felt that she had made an investment in quitting her bad habit. I think the polish made her think about what she was doing, too. Anyway, after a few months, it worked, and she has really nice nails now. I guess if you're a guy, it's a little more difficult, though. Maybe you could find something else to do when you're stressed out, like tapping your fingers or counting to a hundred. You have to try to transfer your habit into a different activity, one that doesn't cause such a problem. 3. How to organize your busy schedule To organize a busy schedule, one thing you could do is make a list. I usually make a list of all the things I have to do. Then I prioritize them. Then I decide which days I'm going to get the things done based on which errands are the most important. Maybe you could use electronic reminders. Put all the things you need to do into your calendar on your phone or your email. Then program it so you have reminders sent to you. For some things, you might get a reminder 15 minutes before, but for other things, it might be better to get a reminder a few hours or even days before. I use that to help me remember people's birthdays. If your schedule is really busy, it might be a good idea to get help. There are plenty of professional consultants who organize people's lives. It's expensive, but if you're too busy, it's the only way to get everything done. Unit 10. The Past and the Future. Page 64, Exercise 2, Conversation. I'm good at history. Part A. Listen and practice. Look, here's a quiz on events of the 20th century. Oh, let me give it a try. I'm good at history. All right. First question. When did World War I begin? I think it began in 1917. Huh. And how long has the United Nations been in existence? Uh, since Kennedy became president in 1961. Hmm. Next question. How long were the Beatles together? Well, they started in 1965 and broke up in 1980, so they were together for 15 years. So, how am I doing so far? Not very well. Not one of your answers is correct. Page 64, Exercise 2, Part B. Do you know the answers to the three questions in Part A? Listen to the rest of the conversation. What are the correct answers? So, what are the correct answers then? Well, World War I began in 1914 and ended in 1918. Oh, that's right. And the United Nations was formally established in 1945 following the end of World War II. And the Beatles? Well, they started back in 1960 and they broke up in 1970, so they were together for 10 years, not 15. Did I say I was good at history? Uh, I meant geography. Page 65, Exercise 3, Grammar Focus. Referring to time in the past. A point or period of time in the past. When did World War II take place? During the 1940s. In the 1940s. Over 70 years ago. How long were the Beatles together? From 1960 to 1970. For 10 years. A period of time that continues into the present. How long has the United Nations been in existence? Since 1945. 
since World War II ended. For about the last 70 years. Page 65, Exercise 4, Pronunciation. Syllable Stress. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice which syllable has the main stress in these four and five syllable words. Notice the secondary stress. Identify. Disadvantage. Communication. Sixty five, exercise four, part B. Listen to the words in the box. Which syllable has the main stress? Write the words in the correct column in part A. Appreciate. Assassination. Catastrophe. Consideration. Conversation. Revolution. Sixty seven. Exercise nine. Perspectives. Part A. Listen to a survey about the future. Check the predictions you think will happen. What will the future hold? Computers will recognize any voice command. You won't need a keyboard. Within 20 years, scientists will have discovered a cure for baldness. People will be living in cities under the ocean. By 2025, world leaders will have eliminated terrorism. Robots will be performing most factory jobs. By 2050, we will have set up human communities on Mars. Medical scientists will find a cure for Alzheimer's disease. Sixty seven, exercise ten, grammar focus. Predicting the future with will. Use will to predict future events or situations. Computers will recognize any voice command. You won't need a keyboard. Use future continuous to predict ongoing actions. People will be living in cities under the ocean. Use future perfect to predict actions that will be completed by a certain time. Within 20 years, scientists will have discovered a cure for baldness. By 2050, we will have set up human communities on Mars. Sixty eight, exercise eleven, listening. A perfect future? Part A. Listen to people discuss changes that will affect these topics of interest in the future. Write down two changes for each topic. One, work. Work? In the future? Well, I think unemployment will keep getting worse. I agree. As companies get more efficient and more computerized, they're finding ways of using less staff. So I guess people will find it hard to get a good job unless they have excellent qualifications. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's probably true. But I also think that because of computers, more and more people will be telecommuting instead of going into an office. Wow, I'd really love that. Can you imagine? Spending most of your work week in the comfort of your own home? Personally, I would get much more done. And with email, instant messaging, and video conferencing, you can still keep in touch with everyone you need to. Well, I'd certainly enjoy it, but I don't know if I'd get more done or not. I'm afraid I might just turn on the TV and zone out. 2. Transportation. As far as transportation is concerned, I think there will be huge changes in the way people use cars. They'll probably have made laws about what kind of car you can own and when you can use it. And I bet it'll be impossible for people to use cars whenever they like. There'll just be too many of them on the roads. 
Exactly. People will have to take other modes of transportation, especially trains. Why do you say that? Well, we won't be able to use cars, and airports take up too much space. With the supply of land for airports shrinking around the world, there will be fewer airports and fewer plane flights. That leaves trains. Huh. So do you think there will be more efficient train systems between cities? Sure. There may even be trains going under the oceans to connect the major continents. Under the oceans? Get out of here. I get nervous enough flying on a plane. 3. Education How do you think education will change in the future? I think kids are going to have to stay in school until they're older, maybe until they're 20 or 21. Why? Well, one reason is that there won't be enough jobs for everyone, so it will be necessary to keep kids in school longer. Hmm. I think they will have found a way for us to learn without teachers. There will be computer learning programs that can teach you much more quickly than a teacher, and they'll also make learning much more fun. Are you saying that our teachers weren't any fun? Well, okay. Maybe some of them were fun. 4. Health Every day you hear about some new medical breakthrough on the news. Yeah, and who knows what will happen in the next 50 years. I think in the next 50 years there will be new drugs that will help people lose weight permanently without dieting. And hopefully, they will have found cures for many of the diseases that are around today, so people will live longer. How much longer do you think? I bet that within the next 50 years, most people will live to be over 100. Progress Check Page 71, Exercise 3, Listening how good is your history? Part A. Listen to people discuss the questions. Write the correct answers. 1. What are you reading? I'm reading an article about the Iditarod. What's the Iditarod? It's a sled dog race in Alaska. I didn't know you liked dog racing. Well, not exactly, but it's interesting to read about anyway. Are you learning anything? Well, they've been doing it since 1973, and the race covers 1,150 miles. Wow, that's pretty far to go in all that snow and ice. 2. How long did apartheid exist in South Africa? Hmm, let's see. I know apartheid ended in 1991, but I'm not sure when it began. Well, I know it was after World War II. Yes. Yes, you're right. It wasn't long after the war ended. I think it was in 1948. You're right. So apartheid existed from 1948 to 1991. Huh. Wow. 3. Dad, can you help me? What do you need? I'm writing this report for school. It's about the space program. I did my research at the library, but I forgot to look something up. What do you need to know? When did a spacecraft first land on Mars? Oh, I remember that. Mom was pregnant with you. It was in 1997. 1997. Thanks. I'm done. Four. What's that? It's a book about the Berlin Wall. Oh, wow. Look at these pictures. They're amazing. Yes, it's incredible to think about. The wall divided the city in half. How long was it up? For almost 30 years. Wow. Five. What are you doing? I'm working on this crossword puzzle. Oh, I love crossword puzzles. What clue are you working on? Well, here. The clue is, began in 1896. It starts with an O. I know this one. It's the Olympics. The Olympics have only been around since 1896? Well, yes, the modern Olympics. Life's Little Lessons 
Page 72, Exercise 2, Conversation I was really immature. Part A. Listen and practice. So what were you like when you were younger? When I was a kid, I was kind of irresponsible. You? Really? What made you change? Graduating from high school. What do you mean? Well, until I graduated, I'd never had any important responsibilities. But then I went off to college. I know what you mean. I was really immature when I was a teenager. So what made you change? I think I became more mature after I got my first job and moved away from home. Once I had a job, I became totally independent. Where did you work? I worked for my dad at the bank. Part B. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What was another turning point for Carol? For Alan. Another turning point for me was when I got my dog, Pepper. I know that sounds silly, but it was really important to me. Why was that so important? Well, I was about 18, my first semester at college. Having a dog of my own made me feel really responsible. He was always waiting for me when I came home from class. I never got to have a dog, but I remember when I got my first bicycle. That was a very important day for me. For the first time, I could go out on my own and go as far as I wanted to. I took really good care of it. Of course, that only lasted a few months, and then I lost interest in it. The grammar Focus Time Clauses Before I had my first job, I was really immature. After I got my first job, I became more mature. Once I had a job, I became totally independent. The moment I moved away from home, I felt like a different person. As soon as I got my own bank account, I started to be more responsible. Until I graduated, I'd never had any important responsibilities. By the time I graduated from high school, I had already started working. Listening. Important Events. Part A. Listen to three people describe important events in their lives. Complete the chart. 1. Sally. One thing that was really a turning point for me was when I learned Spanish. I was always kind of scared of learning a foreign language, yet I was really envious of kids who could speak another language. But when I started learning Spanish, I found I was actually pretty good at it. And the moment I reached that breakthrough stage, you know, when you discover you can actually speak and communicate with people in the language, I felt really proud of myself. I realized that learning a foreign language wasn't an impossible thing after all. Now I can speak three, Spanish, Italian, and German. And I'm taking Korean this year. 2. Henry I'm a twin, and my twin brother and I have always been very close. We always did everything together, and we were never apart for any time at all until we were 18. Then we went to different colleges in different towns, and that was the first time we had ever really had to cope on our own. I think it was good in a way because we both became more confident and independent. Until then, I had always had my brother to depend on whenever I ran into a problem. But once I went away to college, I realized I was actually capable of working things out on my own. 3. Debbie I guess I was always pretty shy in school, and I didn't share a lot of things with people, not even with my parents. Then one time it was awards day at school. I didn't think I was getting any prizes or anything, and neither did my parents. So we were all pretty surprised when the principal announced that I was the top student in my class. Afterward, I didn't think too much about it, 
But then people suddenly started treating me differently. You know, I think some of the kids in school started looking up to me, and I became a lot more outgoing after that. Listen again. What do these three people have in common? 1. Sally One thing that was really a turning point for me was when I learned Spanish. I was always kind of scared of learning a foreign language, yet I was really envious of kids who could speak another language. But when I started learning Spanish, I found I was actually pretty good at it. And the moment I reached that breakthrough stage, you know, when you discover you can actually speak and communicate with people in the language, I felt really proud of myself. I realized that learning a foreign language wasn't an impossible thing after all. Now I can speak three, Spanish, Italian, and German. And I'm taking Korean this year. 2. Henry I'm a twin, and my twin brother and I have always been very close. We always did everything together, and we were never apart for any time at all until we were 18. Then we went to different colleges in different towns, and that was the first time we had ever really had to cope on our own. I think it was good in a way, because we both became more confident and independent. Until then, I had always had my brother to depend on whenever I ran into a problem. But once I went away to college, I realized I was actually capable of working things out on my own. 3. Debbie I guess I was always pretty shy in school, and I didn't share a lot of things with people, not even with my parents. Then one time it was awards day at school. I didn't think I was getting any prizes or anything, and neither did my parents. So we were all pretty surprised when the principal announced that I was the top student in my class. Afterward, I didn't think too much about it, but then people suddenly started treating me differently. You know, I think some of the kids in school started looking up to me, and I became a lot more outgoing after that. I should have. Part A. Listen to Maya Misery talk about her regrets. Do you have any similar regrets? I should have studied something more practical while I was in college. I shouldn't have waited so long to choose a major. If I'd listened to my mother, I would have learned to play a musical instrument. If I hadn't wasted so much money last year, I would have moved into my own apartment by now. If I'd been more ambitious in college, I could have learned to speak another language. If I hadn't been so irresponsible, I could have gotten better grades. Expressing regret and describing hypothetical situations. Use should have plus the past participle to express regret. I should have studied something more practical when I was in college. I shouldn't have waited so long to choose a major. Use would have plus the past participle to express probable outcomes in hypothetical situations. Use could have plus the past participle to express possible outcomes. If I'd listened to my mother, I would have learned to play a musical instrument. If I hadn't been so irresponsible, I could have gotten better grades. Again, reduction of have and been. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice how have and been are reduced in these sentences. I should have been less selfish when I was younger. 
If I'd been more ambitious, I could have gotten a promotion. Regrets. Part A. Listen to people describe their regrets. What does each person regret? 1. Alex. I should never have stopped exercising. It's the dumbest thing I've ever done. I've been trying to lose weight for the last year and a half, and it's really difficult. I guess I was just like everyone else at my age. I thought I would be thin forever. And I ate junk food all the time. It was okay then because I was playing tennis, hockey, and soccer. Then, after college, I got busy and quit playing sports. But now I'm determined to join a gym because I know I can't get healthy by just dieting. Besides, I love potato chips. Two, Yan. If I'd had a choice, I would have learned to play the guitar when I was a kid. My parents made me study the piano, and I only studied classical music. I love the piano, but it's not very practical. I mean, you can't take a piano with you to a party. But I love it at a party when someone brings a guitar and they can play songs and everyone sings along. I wish I could do that. 3. Jacob I regret something I didn't do. I regret not going to Europe with my friends when I had the chance. It was the summer after we all graduated from college. I started to look for a job right away, but my friends went backpacking in Europe for a few weeks. I should have gone because I didn't get a job right away anyway, and my friends had an unforgettable time together. I regret it because they all had this amazing experience without me, and looking back, I could have and should have gone. Again, why does he or she regret it? 1. Alex. I should never have stopped exercising. It's the dumbest thing I've ever done. I've been trying to lose weight for the last year and a half, and it's really difficult. I guess I was just like everyone else at my age. I thought I would be thin forever, and I ate junk food all the time. It was okay then because I was playing tennis, hockey, and soccer. Then, after college, I got busy and quit playing sports. But now I'm determined to join a gym because I know I can't get healthy by just dieting. Besides, I love potato chips. 2. Yan. If I'd had a choice, I would have learned to play the guitar when I was a kid. My parents made me study the piano, and I only studied classical music. I love the piano, but it's not very practical. I mean, you can't take a piano with you to a party. But I love it at a party when someone brings a guitar and they can play songs and everyone sings along. I wish I could do that. 3. Jacob. I regret something I didn't do. I regret not going to Europe with my friends when I had the chance. It was the summer after we all graduated from college. I started to look for a job right away, but my friends went backpacking in Europe for a few weeks. I should have gone because I didn't get a job right away anyway, and my friends had an unforgettable time together. I regret it because they all had this amazing experience without me. And looking back, I could have and should have gone.